everybody, this is Nate at Leopard Design and Print. I'm back with another COVID conversation. Um, today, I have Angela Sprague, who is a paralegal and the owner of Assurance Detailed Support. So, hey, what's up? I've known you forever, and you've given me tons of advice over my life. And now, I get the chance to ask you more questions um, about what you do. So, how's it going? Good. Well, first, what do you do and how did you get to where you are? Okay, so I'm a probate paralegal and I'll start with how I got there. I went to school at Ashton University, got a business degree, and after I graduated, I didn't, I couldn't find a job. So I took a job at a bank, uh, just to kind of hold me over and the vice, one of the vice presidents who ran the trust department, he wanted someone with a college education. Didn't care what it was in, he just wanted a college education. And he happened to be an attorney as well. So I went to work for him. And in that job, got a pretty good knowledge of investments and the financial side of things. Then also we did estate administration. So I really enjoyed that. Uh, the guy I was working with ended up leaving and he kind of took me along with him. And he started his own law firm and I was working for him and doing all kinds of different legal work. But the probate, the estate administration was always my passion. And um, I left the workforce for a little bit after I had my daughter and um, decided to go back into the business and paired up with another probate paralegal and she kind of mentored me, trained me. And so now I am just working uh, as a paralegal independent contractor. So I work for different attorneys. I'm not with one exclusive attorney. And I get to do the part of law that I absolutely love. So it works out well. Awesome. Well, always do what you love because it's way more fun. Right. Um, we're talking specifically to mostly screen printing shop owners, but really just business owners in general. What things do you see most often, you know, at different points in people's lives or especially when they come up with legal things that you look at and you just go, man, if this business owner would have done this, if, if they would have just had this in place, like what are the most common things you see that people should be doing and maybe aren't doing? In my line of work in, in the legal industry, um, so attorneys, they mean well, but they often talk over the client's head. Mm -hmm. uh, and I see a lot of clients leave the attorney's office and they think that the attorney took care of everything for them. Mm -hmm. and, and from the attorney's standpoint, they absolutely did. Uh, but there's, there's work to be done on the client's part that they need to finish their okay. estate plans. Um, and I, I see a communication breakdown between attorneys and the client. And so I would really like to see attorneys maybe communicate better, okay. kind of follow up more with their clients uh, to make sure that they're doing those action steps that they talked about. Because um, by the time they come to me, um, they'll say, I thought we all I thought we took care of all this so yeah. we didn't have to go through probate. Well, the attorney can only do so much. Right. Um, but I think it's just a communication breakdown. So I'd like to really see that improve between attorneys and their clients. Is there uh, certain questions that uh, a client should be asking their attorney that maybe they just don't know to ask to kind of um, help alleviate that? Um, I think, I think what the, what the client needs to ask is after they sign all their documents. So mm -hmm. I'm primarily talking about, we're just estate planning. So your wills, your power of attorneys, your yeah. trust, if it applies. After you sign all that and they give you your nice packet or binder, whatever you get, just ask the attorney, what do I need to do now? Okay. And make sure, make sure you're leaving that meeting with a list of action steps, a list okay. of to do's. Um, and then the burden is really on you as, right. as the client to do those, but make sure you're asking the question, what yeah. do I need to do now? Okay. No, I think that's, uh, <laughs> I think that's pretty good advice. 
when you, how many people do you think don't have, when they get to the point in their state where they need help in closing mm -hmm. up in a state or whatever, do you, how common is it for people to not have that in order or, you know, is that common or should people be working on that more and maybe where's a good starting point for them? I, I think it's very common to not have things in order. Um, I see both. I see, I have people that have nothing in order. Mm -hmm. And then I have ones that had almost everything in order, but there's those couple little assets that they forgot about. Mm -hmm. um, and I, that's fine. I mean, that's gonna happen and there's ways to deal with that and that's fine. Um, I, I really do think that most people don't, they don't like to think about death. Right. They, don't, they don't like to deal with those, that, issue and i think i've just been around it so much it's it's a very easy conversation for me right um so i think i think most people don't want to deal with it so they're not prepared okay but i think every person regardless of your worth regardless of your net worth um they need to have a conversation they need okay. to have a conversation with their family here's what you do if something happens to me okay. here's what this is even if it's cash buried in the backyard yeah make sure somebody knows where it is okay uh, so i think some people think well i don't have a lot of stuff um it doesn't matter the the value you just need to communicate because somebody needs to know what to do what to do with it okay, so what changes have you seen as a result of the pandemic and it can be a uh, what you've seen either in your client base, like what things have changed for them and what actions they've had to take, or can be within your own business, what what shifts you've had to take, either one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I have seen one of my attorneys uh, is dealing with, he has drafted some documents for clients and they're, they're older clients, so they're kind of in that demographic that's the high risk. Mm -hmm. um, he's drafted the documents, but they don't want to come to the office sign them yeah and per ohio law you know will still have to be witnessed in person so you yeah. can't do it electronically so there's a piece of our business that you just simply cannot do electronically you mm. can't do it um so in that regard some of our business has just been put on hold okay because people are staying home like they're supposed to yep. Um, and so that that's affecting my attorneys because obviously they need to get those documents signed so they can get the invoice paid. Yeah. Um, and then as far as in my work, you know, people are still dying. So regardless of the pandemic. Yeah. Um, so I think for, for my work, I'm still going to have the work. It's just a matter of people may wait a little longer to deal with it. Yeah. Um, and some of my estates are on hold because of, People can't close on the, the deal for the real estate loan because they're unemployed and you mm -hmm. know we need to get this house sold so we can close the estate. Um, so I have experienced a little bit of that just on hold uh, because of the shutdown. What are your plans for your business, I guess, going forward? And that, that's kind of a broad question, but you know, in the in the future, what are you looking for for people to um, like who's your ideal client for you to help out? And if they're watching or see this is there a best way to contact you or to get a hold of you and reach out to you mm -hmm. yeah so my clients are the attorneys mm -hmm. um, so i'm really looking for those small small practices maybe one two attorneys that um, the the probate industry is so uh, specialized and so most of those attorneys don't have a staff that mm -hmm. knows probate all that well. Um, so it kind of, and it, it gives the benefit to those small, uh, smaller firms that they can use me as needed. Mm -hmm. So that, that's kind of nice. Um, so I'm looking for those smaller firms, one, two, three attorneys that they don't have full-time probate staff to do their estates. I am looking for an attorney that estate planning is a huge part of their business. Yeah. Um, I, I don't I don't want to sound like I don't care about other attorneys, but just as an example, um, if it's a bankruptcy attorney, 
yeah. and he doesn't do anything with the state planning, a state administration. That's not really the, that's not really in my niche. Um, okay. So I really, my goal is to build a relationship with the attorney, build their trust. Cause you know, I'm, I'm given a lot of authority and the attorney needs to trust me. And uh, that's my goal is to build trust with the attorney. I take care of everything from A to Z uh, with the, the probate process. And I know a lot. And as long as the attorney is willing to back me up um, and kind of be hands on, I, I take care of a lot behind the scenes, but I do want the attorney to be informed and I keep him informed. Um, the reason why my business is named Assurance Detailed Support one, it's my initials, ADS. <laughs> but um, I, I want to give attorneys the assurance that their work is going to be done. Okay. And it's going to be detailed the way they want it detailed. Mm -hmm. And I'm there to support them. They awesome. may not know what forms to do, but I do. And so I want to be there to support them through the probate process and help them serve their client the best they can. Awesome. Awesome. You have great values then. Cool. Um, yeah. Is there a best way for people to reach you, contact you, see you on the interwebs, whatever? But the best way to contact me right now is through email. Okay. And uh, my email address is just Angela at myprobatesupport.com. Cool. Awesome. Well, I will post that also in the video notes. And uh, thanks for coming on and sharing some knowledge with a bunch of us. Thank you.